Ever since I started building and customizing wooden railway models, there is one character I always wanted to take on, that being Duck the Great Western Engine. This was simply because out of all the engines in my collection, the official Duck model just felt like one of the weakest. Now, don't get me wrong, he's still great and holds a lot of classic charm, but why have great when we could have amazing? I'm Gio, and today we're going to make the ultimate Duck model. I think what bothers me most about Duck's appearance is that he's supposed to be this big engine, but he just feels so puny. Most shocking is his lack of a funnel, which is such a key feature that I'm jarred was ignored for the 16 years this model was made from. Mattel did their own take on Duck in 2013, which rectified this issue, but just didn't feel 100% right to me. Hey, it has a great face though. I think the best way to show what I wanted to do would be this blueprint I made in early 2023. My plans were to extend the cab and add a curved roof, give him a larger bunker and a longer running board, as well as extending the chassis. With a rough plan, I started disassembling Duck. This process was pretty standard and actually the smoothest I've had as far as taking a train apart. The hardest part was the face, as I didn't realize I was hammering straight into the screw that was holding it in place. For context, most wooden railway models, like Duck for example, usually have a screw running through the body. More on this later. Hammering the blade into the screw ended up destroying the X-Acto blade I was using too. Whoops. Once it was off, I went to my graveyard of dead engine parts, engine parts. and found a 2002 Thomas of which I took the cab from. We'll be grabbing some more parts from him later. The cab was cut in half to increase the width to it. Also disregard the fact that I neglected to cut his bunker off before this. Decent. On Duck's tanks, I removed the original dome and safety valve using some pliers. One came out pretty clean, the other, well... I guess I can't use those again. Since I extended the width of the cab, I'd have to do the same with the tanks. So rummaging through my mystery bin, I was able to find some jumbo popsicle sticks that when added to the sides, provided an identical width to the extended cab. My old friend wood filler came in to fill the gaps. The body was sanded and I was in love with it. To complete the main body shape, I shifted to the coal bunker. The one on the original model was the perfect shape but just needed to be extended in width and length. Once it was cut from the cab, I took a piece of scrap wood and matched the radius of the curve on it. I cut the piece out, then cut the original cab in half and glued them as one. It was a bit rough, but turned out a lot better than anticipated. Here's how I thought it was going to go. It was sanded and glued to some craft wood to make it longer. Also, get a load of that homemade band-aid. Please do not try that at home, get a real one. Thereupon, I glued the cab and body together. Make sure to do a little cleanup on that glue seepage too, and a touch of filler. The shape and size was perfect, but I thought he needed a bit of height, so some more scrap popsicle sticks were added to the bottom to boost him up. Earlier, we ripped out what was assumed to be Duck's dome and safety valve, so I started making a new set for him. We can't let him be domeless, can we? For the new set, I used a method I never really tried before, which was using a wooden dowel and sanding it down while inside a drill. It goes without saying, please do not attempt this. The safety valve came out perfectly and honestly reminded me of a Lego 1x1 cone piece. I cut it off, sanded it down and drilled a hole into the body for it. Badly. This is just like the fun fair. Give us two seconds.
That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys, if you guys can understand that, then what you'll see happen is that you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Something greater will. I went back to scavenging more parts from that aforementioned Thomas model and stealing his funnel was next. Now, using Thomas's funnel isn't probably the best idea as his and Duck's are quite different, but you gotta use with what you're dealt. And hopefully this displeases those theories that Thomas and Duck hate each other. Because now Duck is literally made from Thomas. And plus, this book literally says they're friends. Come on. The funnel was glued in and once again more wood filler was added. And speaking of filler, if you want to help fill in the production quality of these videos, please consider donating to my Ko-Fi and you'll get a shout out in the next video. Link in description. The dome was next, and this was important as compared to a lot of the other characters, Duck had a huge dome, unmistakably large. The shape came out pretty good too, could have been a bit more rounded, but I think it works. Then, like for the safety valve, was making the spot where it had to go and then drilling the hole. The circumference of the dowel was around one centimeter exactly, so I had to slowly drill into Duck with every drill bit I had, slowly edging up to the correct size. It started pretty good, but as expected, things went wrong. I mean, you're watching a Geo video, what do you expect, a seamless process? You remember earlier in the video I made a comment about the screw that went into the body through the face? Well, the bit hit it, causing it to go off center. This caused me to spend an unholy amount of time trying to undo my mistake by sanding, carving, and re-drilling the spot. Eventually, I got it to a satisfactory spot. But the pains of having to fix the error left scars on both Duck and my enthusiasm to finish him. Just at this point at least. With so much emphasis at this point being focused on the body, I wouldn't be surprised if like me you forgot about the chassis. First was disassembly, using the other end of my hammer to rip the wheels out. And then it was cutting it into two pieces. This was an attempt to replicate a feature on the model and the actual pannier in which Duck was based, where the rear wheel is further back. This was actually something I never noticed at all and only realized it when watching Larry's Legos video on his incredible custom Lego duck. Make sure to check that out also. Once it was cut, some craft wood was used to make the space and it was all glued together. And then, as expected, filled with filler. And it would fill my heart if you would consider smashing that subscribe button. Okay, I'll stop now. After that, I removed the magnets too and extended the front and back of the chassis like in the original blueprint to make Duck longer. The running board was my next venture and I originally wanted to try something new with this model. In fear that the standard height of the boards would look awkward on Duck, I decided to use this craft board, which was half the standard size. On top of that, I'd add coffee stirrers to the front and back to act as buffers. At the time I assumed this was a good idea, but you can see this change later on. As a test, I painted it and I was really pleased of the look of it. It went through a couple passes with wood filler and sanding to fix any imperfect spots, and it got to a point where I was practically happy with it. With all the major portions of Duck being at a satisfactory point, I decided for his model to try something new. Priming. Now I usually don't prime my wooden models, not specifically to avoid the process, but just for the fact that I found the paint I used adhered to the wood fine, and not to mention I had a rough history with spray paint. But here it worked pretty great. I appreciated it as it allowed me to see any imperfection in the wood that I previously missed and allowed me to amend it. And you know what that means? More filler! After priming comes painting, and I started with the chassis and running board and getting those colors onto such a smooth surface was so satisfying. I decided I had so much success with the primer from Rust-Oleum, I'd try their gloss sealer too. Big mistake. I don't know if it was a negative reaction with the paint or just due to the cold October weather, but the paint was ruined, it was cracked, and it looked disgusting. I neglected to work on Duck for around a month after that, mostly from a loss of motivation. Both the chassis and body had these huge obstacles that stemmed from them, and even though I was technically able to get around the former, 
It just felt fleeting in a way. During this time, I had a lot of reflection of the process as a whole and everything I had completed for it. Sure, the mistakes were major setbacks, but it was unlike anything I had ever made before. And if I got this far, surely I could make the rest work. I jumped back into it and decided the running board was the first thing I wanted to rectify. I completely ripped it off from the chassis in favor of using a single piece of the craft wood as I alluded to prior. The craft wood ended up looking so much better and I'm so glad I used it. I then moved to the chassis and sanded the ruined paint. Just as almost all the other parts of Ducks created a problem for me, so did the decals, particularly his GWR lettering. I first attempted to try and replicate the graphic from scratch, but that turned out to be in vain because it just looked bad. I ended up just using a similar looking font, which I'm still not sold on, but I was happy enough with. The rest was fairly simple and I was particularly quite pleased with the handrails and numbers. After I printed the decals, I attempted to match the color of them using paint, which is backwards as you would usually try to print the decals to match the model, but my printer decided to make them a completely different color to what was on my screen so I had to work around that. After a fresh coat of green, details such as the funnel, coal bunker, and cab roof were painted in. And the decals were applied. Now I made the decals based off one side of duck and mirrored it. And that became a problem, as he wasn't symmetrical. So I had to work a little to get the other side to fit, but it kind of worked in a way. And also you can watch me crush the decal here. After what seemed like error after error, Duck's body and chassis were 100% complete bearing his gloss finish, which I was super hesitant to apply due to the past incident. Before then, I took some video of him in case of disaster, with some recently completed custom coaches, my Oliver and Stepney models, and I was really proud of him. But then, I realized, at that same point, he was missing something crucial to him. That's it! The wheels! Despite Duck's main body being in pretty much immaculate shape when I received it, the wheels had a bunch of nicks and bumps on them, which was a bit of a pain as I didn't really want to try to find a new set for the model. So I fixed them up the best I could, starting with a nice bath, removing any grime that they previously had. After drying, I painted the rims outside the flanges a silver color. I love the contrast it added on the wheels of the actual model and thought it worked brilliantly here. And finally, what you've been waiting for, the face. In my mind, I originally wanted to use a take-along duck face because I thought compared to the face of the wooden railway model, it just looked happier. But upon inspecting mine, I just didn't think it fit the vibe I wanted. User Star Switcher suggested I use the Bandai Tex face, which looked perfect but was just too big. So I decided in the end I'd just repaint the original wooden railway face. And after everything, I'm so glad I did. The face was primed with Tamiya Gray Primer and after was painted with my favorite Full Guard Gray, which is the same I use on my running boards. After adding the eyebrows with a paint pen and the whites of the eyes, I was stunned at how nice it looked. Just those little bits of detail added so much character to him, I was stunned. And last was the gloss finish. Realizing the issues that arose prior, I took a long time to carefully spray each side of him individually in my badly lit, stinky garage. And luckily, nothing cracked or peeled. Huh, makes you think, maybe it's the spray. Hmm. And now, I think it's time for a reveal. Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon. Of course I don't know what. If you don't tell me what what is... 
Sir Topham Hatt says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. Rubbish, said James. Any engine could do it. If you worked more and chattered less, this yard would be a sweeter, a better, and a happier place. The new engine arrived. Oh my gosh, look, it's Doug! What's your name? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck around. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. was a really rousing welcome for Duck, Great Western Engine. After everything, I'm so happy with how Duck turned out, especially as I was able to get him done in time for the Hobbies and Miniatures Festival in January of this year, where he made his public debut. I'm still trying to find that happy medium for custom that I think hits the right amount of detail, but still is able to match the original aesthetic of the toy line, and I think I hit it with Duck. So I hope you enjoyed watching. If you've made it this far, please subscribe, and if you're feeling extra generous, please visit my link tree where you'll find links to all my social media, and my Ko-Fi where you can leave a donation and get a shout out in the next video. And with that, I've been Gio, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The new engine arrived. Oh my gosh, look, it's Hank! From season 12!